Welcome today to the Carter Report. Today, liberty is being attacked by the very people who say they're defending it. We have a special guest today. His name is Alan Reinek, whose mission in life is to defend freedom that he believes is under attack everywhere. Alan is the executive director of the Church State Council right here in the United States of America. Today, Alan and I are going to talk about Edward Snowden's revelations about how loss of privacy, we could call this segment of the program Beyond Big Brother. Did you know this? Listen carefully to this one. Here in the United States of America, people are losing their jobs because of their religion. We're going to talk about that also. Did you know that Protestantism is a dying religion in America? And yet Protestantism gave us our beliefs in religious freedom. What happens when Protestantism goes? What will happen to religious freedom? We're going to talk about that soon. Also, should Christian churches and Christians be forced by the government to participate in same-sex marriage? All this and much more today on the Carter Report. Welcome today. Hi, I'm John Carter. My wife Beverly and I were watching television the other night, watching the news, American news. They told us that the church in North America is actually shrinking. They said that atheism is the fastest growing religious movement today in North America. And people are saying, what on earth can we do to save the church? Well, of course, Christ died for the church. He saved the church. But what they mean is, how can we keep the church as a vibrant force in the world today, in Australia, in America, and in Europe, and in the rest of the world? Let me tell you a little story. John Wesley was one of the greatest preachers that the English-speaking world has ever heard. John Wesley came upon the scene of the, of the church in England a few hundred years ago when the church was dying. Like the church today, it was a shrinking church, but the people in the church were in a state of denial. They refused to accept the reality that the church was dying. John Wesley did something that uh, other people said couldn't be done. He revived the church through public evangelism. Did you hear that? He started to preach Christ, he preached the Bible, and he preached out of doors and indoors, and the church was saved. Not only did he save a lot of souls, the souls of sinners, he saved the souls of the saints. Please join me, my friend, in evangelism. It's what Jesus did. Write to me, John Carter, Post Office Box, 1900 Thousand Oaks, California. In Australia, write to me at the address on the screen at Terrigal in New South Wales. Join me, my friend, in preaching Christ. Join me in public evangelism around the world. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Welcome today to the Carter Report. Attorney Reinick, Alan, we're delighted to have you here with us today. And it's my pleasure and privilege to be with you, John. Uh, you're an old friend and an old guest on this program, but not an old person. I don't, like, I don't like the old no. part. No, well, we'll leave that out. <laughs> uh, you and I today, before we go any further, affirm the rights of all people. That's right. Uh, the right to be a Muslim or a Christian or a Buddhist or a Hindu, a Protestant or a Catholic. Uh, we also affirm the rights of people to, um, to make definite choices in the area of sexuality. Correct. Now, you and I may not believe in those choices, but we believe that every person has the right to be what he wants to be. We don't believe in everybody's religious uh, beliefs either, but... The genius of America 
is that this is a place where people of different values, different religious beliefs, different sexual orientation can live together in peace. Uh, and all of us have our rights respected. Uh, so what's all this about the Freedom of Act and the, the Patriot Act, uh, which is going before Congress, I think almost as we speak? You know, it's amazing to me, John, that after the revelations of, of Edward Snowden about the extent of government spying mm. on not just people abroad, but on Americans. You and me. On you and me. Emails, telephone calls. That uh, Congress is ready to give back to the NSA some of the same powers that they have been abusing up until now, spying on Americans. But Americans, uh, by nature and by tradition, believe in freedom. What has happened to the American person that he's prepared to now to ditch those great truths that he held dear for so long? I have to go back to that great British novelist, George Orwell, and urge people to reread 1984. Yes. Orwell talked about doublespeak. Mm. Yes. Uh, and now we have the Freedom Act, which is an act to authorize the, uh, the government authorities, the intelligence community, to violate our freedom. Give me some illustrations. Well, the Freedom it's Act. It's been widely reported that all of the major uh, internet companies, Google, Yahoo, Facebook, etc., they're all uh, letting the NSA tap in and collect everything. They're scooping up everything. Uh, all our phone calls, all of our phone data, all of our internet data. Everything that you do, your phone uh, is a tracking device. Everywhere you go, everything you do is being collected by the government. This is in the land of, of freedom. Why is it that so many Americans, and others too, I'm sure, are so quick to trade freedom for, for security. temporary security? Why is this so? Well, obviously, they haven't heeded the wisdom of that wise old American, Ben Franklin, who said those who would trade eternal liberty for temporary security deserve neither. And that's what they're going to get. They're going to get neither. Right. Um, Ellen, this is a story you'll find hard to believe. I was talking as a pastor some time back to a member of my church, and she had come from Germany as a little girl she was brought up when the Nazis were ruling Germany. And she said to me in her beautiful American-German accent, she said, if I lived back there, what else could I do? I would have to follow Hitler. She said, otherwise, I would lose my life. And so people seem to be so quick to give up their freedoms for a little bit of temporary security. But you know, John, this is what happens when fear becomes the dominant political tool. Fear, fear, fear. Mm. How often do we hear the word terror, terrorism, war on yes. terrorism? Yes. And when you hear the government declaring war on something like drugs or terror, um, understand that it's your rights that are going to be the first casualty in this war. Where does this fit in with the great American Constitution? Americans are tremendously proud of their Constitution. I don't know if too many have read it. You know, John, I was sorely tempted. If I could have put my hands on a copy and brought it here today, mm. I would sit here right now and tear it up in front of the cameras because that's what the government has done. If we had a shredding machine. I would put it through the shredder to demonstrate what our government has done to our constitutional rights. Uh, give me some Fourth specific Amendment. instances. Fourth Amendment, right to be free of unreasonable searches and seizures. Yes. Government is supposed to have probable cause yes. before they can search mm. your belongings, your emails, your phone calls. They're gathering all of this up without any probable cause that any of us... Without a murmur. Correct. Yeah. So the Fourth Amendment is basically dead. Did it you hear matters. that, my friend? The Fourth Amendment is virtually dead right here in the United States of America. Now, this country, once upon a time, prided itself on being a country 
that believed in the Bible. Sola Christus, only Christ, and uh, sola scriptura. And therefore, this country basically was founded by Protestants. And Protestants gave to us the concept of religious freedom. You did not have religious freedom in the Roman Catholic countries. Is that true or false? That's pretty much true, sure. Um, religious freedom, uh, as a historical matter, really is a development of Protestant theology. Now, in the of Catholic the notion, countries. Uh, of the notion of, so, uh, you know, justification by faith. Yes. That each person has the right the obligation to have a personal relationship mm -hmm. with Jesus Christ through faith. His own priests before God. Within, see, Catholicism was predominantly communitarian. Mm -hmm. You're standing in the community, you're standing before God, um, you know, you were part of the community. Yes. Protestantism shifted the focus from the church community to the individual personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And from that, we got a culture of respect for the rights of the individual. Now, this is history. We're not offending anybody, but traditionally, the, the Roman Catholic countries were totalitarian systems. Latin America, for generations, no religious freedom. Much of Europe, no religious freedom because of the, uh, the policies of the great Roman Catholic Church. And America was founded by people who came over here because they wanted to set up a state without a king and a church without a pope. In, in fairness, you have to realize that when there is a single religion in a community, oftentimes that religion exercises power yes. and doesn't extend freedom to others. Hmm. And the same was true in Puritan New England. Yes, it was. It was when hmm. the Great Awakening flooded America with a diversity of denominations hmm. that America realized, well, we can't favor one over another. We don't want a battle between all the different churches and religious freedom was nailed down and respected in our state and federal constitution. Is Protestantism dying in America? It is. You know, there's a lot of different aspects to this. When you go back to Jefferson's Declaration of Independence, that all men are created equal, that we are endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights. Mm. That's a Protestant idea. Yes, it is. That human beings have inherent dignity because we're created by God. Yes. Now, in postmodern... And the state is the servant of the people. Correct. And Not the, state, the other way around. And the state is under judgment of God. There's somebody that the state answers to. When you come to a postmodern ethos and you cast off religion, the state no longer has anyone to answer to. Um, power becomes much more corruptible. Yes. And there's no philosophical foundation for human rights and religious freedom. And today in the United States of America, people by the droves are leaving the Protestant churches and are giving up faith in the Bible. And if you were to, you know, I've spoken around the world to vast audiences, but when I've spoken in America and I've talked about Martin Luther, the vast majority thought I was talking about that man the African-American yeah, who right. was killed. And they, I, I said, I'm going to show a movie on Martin Luther. They said, we'll be along yeah. to see about the civil rights movement. Right. Now, Alan, we're going to talk in the next segment about Mr. Snowden. Was he a hero or a heretic? You're watching the Carter Report, and we'll be back in a moment. Stay with us. God has his time and his place for everything. And the time and the place now is Latin America, including Cuba. Time Magazine talks about the Second Protestant Reformation and describes how hundreds of thousands, even millions of Latinos are coming to the gospel of Christ. I'm not an armchair theologian, I'm speaking according to experience. I've seen it with my own eyes. Recently, we went down to El Salvador. There I spoke in the largest football stadium 
in Central America with the biggest crowd that that football stadium had ever, ever seen. They came not to see a football match, but to hear about the blood of Christ. Millions are coming to a knowledge of God in Latin America. Doors are opening in Cuba. Who knows? We may be going to Cuba soon. As the doors open, by the grace of God, we are going to step through those doors. And we want you to step through those doors with us and be part of our team for such a time as this. Please write to me, friend. Don't put it off. Write to me, John Carter, Post Office Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. In Australia, write to me at Terrigal, New South Wales. Be part of the Second Reformation. Join us and see the miracles of God. Amen. Welcome back to the Carter Report. My special guest is attorney Alan Reinick, who is a specialist in church-state relationships. Alan, welcome here today. Thank you, John. Snowden. Let's talk about Snowden. Now, we don't condone people stealing, stealing state secrets or any of those things. But tell me your opinion. Did Edwin Snowden do the cause of freedom a service? Is he a heretic or a hero? In my book, Snowden is a hero. Oh, you're a brave man, because that's not politically correct, is it? Well, I've never worried about being politically correct. God John. bless you, Alan. That's why you're on this program, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, secrecy is the enemy of democracy. Yes. Democracy... It's un-American. Um, America is supposed to be, in the words of Abraham Lincoln, one of our greatest presidents, a government of, by, and for the people. But in the age of our national intelligence, uh, we no longer have government of, by, and for the people because the people have no clue what our government is doing. And most of the, the government's don't care. not accountable. Yeah, but they don't care, do they? Well, that's pretty sad. Yeah, but most people don't seem to care. They say, uh, give me security first, and I don't care too much about your liberties. A journalist was interviewing Americans in Times Square and asking them if they knew who Edward Snowden was. Yes. And most of them did not even know. No. So uh, I, we can't assume that our listeners know that Snowden is the one who released a lot of documents about the extent of NSA spying on Americans and on world leaders and others uh, in foreign countries, but programs that the American people deserve to know about and deserve to have a public debate about. And that's why hmm. Snowden wanted to start a public debate about the extent of American spying activities. And, and Snowden uh, said certain things. He said, you know, uh, the, the government has been acted, acting against, uh, outside the law, against the law. Well, I think and, that's and, pretty clear. And only recently, the, the courts have declared in his favor on one of these crucial points. Correct, that the uh, wholesale, uh, you know, obtaining of our phone records is a violation of the Constitution. Uh, do you think that this fits in somehow uh, into Bible prophecy? Well, I do, John. Um, we see in the final pages of Earth's history to the extent that we have hints in Bible prophecy uh, the complete and utter demolition of human freedom. Yes, yes. And, and mm. this is part yes. and parcel of it. Yes. You know, we were all chilled back, you know, 50, 60 years ago uh, or longer, depending upon your age, when we first read Orwell's 1984. Yes. But as you mentioned Would you earlier, recommend that people read that book? Oh, absolutely. And Say, we are tell, so, us, tell us about we're it. We're so far beyond yeah. Orwell's vision. And the name of the book? 1984. Have you read the book, friend? You need to read it. 1984. But we're, we're way beyond that in terms yes. of the government capacity to monitor your every movement and to have access to all of your activities. So you believe the government has gone too far in violating the privacy of the citizens? You know, the thing that I've often said in 
thinking about where we're at here with our freedom, John, yes. is that you're only free as long as you're irrelevant. As long as you're completely irrelevant Ooh. and meaningless, then you have nothing to fear from the government. But as soon <laughs> as you have something to say that's important... You're free if you're irrelevant. Yes. Ah. So, you know, if that you want to be... That must make a lot of people feel good. If you want to be blissfully irrelevant, then yes. you, can, you can relax in your television-induced slumber or your beers or whatever it yes. is, your yes. drug of choice. Television's a drug. Do you think we've been dumbing down America through television and other, um, what shall we call them? You know, the American people are bombarded with so much stuff. Well, and much of it John, is garbage. We're totally over medicated. Yes. Antidepressants, yes. anti anxiety, you mm -hmm. know, sleeping pills, yeah. caffeine, nicotine, alcohol. So who cares marijuana. about the Constitution? Uh, not too many. And then groups that uh, are defending it are blasted. Yes, yes. They're considered to be disloyal and unpatriotic to the flag, whereas in fact they are standing up for America and standing up for the Constitution. How important, Alan, is the Constitution? If we want to have to preserve a culture where individuals have freedom, where we have rights, Constitution's our foundation. But you see, the whole culture is changing, is it not? We've got, we're getting rid of the Protestant culture that gave birth to freedom, and we have a new culture of permissiveness where anything goes. Well, but in our postmodern ethos, there's no restraint mm -hmm. on the accumulation and abuse of power. Mm -hmm. And the media has been dominated by large corporations that now own the media yes. and the same large corporations are the big financial donors to uh, the politicians yes. so there's not really an independent well, press what happened to democracy democracy is suffering oh, tremendously so because when people think that they go to the polling booth and they put in their vote on the whole it doesn't count for much at all does it because you've got big forces that are controlling the political process. And many of these forces do not believe in freedom as we believe the Constitution teaches. You know, in the macro sense, uh, in the big picture sense, yes, I think you're right. But I don't want to be um, someone who sells cynicism and apathy. Americans are already <laughs> apathetic. Enough, and <laughs> when it comes to influencing specific bills mm. and specific actions, everybody does have a voice and everybody does have influence and people should not assume that they don't count. Let, and me, let me put something... Be apathetic. Let me put something to you. You know, as well as I do, back in, was it 1859, mm -hmm. Charles Darwin put out a book called On the Origin of Species. And the end result of that book became the death of God. God was not necessary because we had a process that was called atheistic evolution. And therefore, God was not only demoted, God was sacked, God was... God was executed. And somebody said, the death of God always leads to the death of man. It's and very with, with the death of God and the death of man, does not this contribute tremendously to the erosion of personal liberties? Well, of course it does. If human beings are not created in the image of God and of inherent dignity, then who cares if we live or die? Yes. And so we have a culture today of, of unbelief, that God is demoted, God is abolished, and who cares what is right and wrong? And if this is so, it's not such a big step to go and say, not only is the Bible irrelevant, so is the American Constitution. But, you know, put this in the perspective of a secular person. Yes. Um, the reason why religious freedom is uh, so tenuous today is because religion itself is increasingly, increasingly regarded as either a harmless myth at best uh -huh. or very dangerous yes. at its worst. So why protect religious freedom if you're just protecting people's rights to believe a myth that could, in fact, be dangerous? And so you and I believe that this book can be dem demonstrated 
to be true. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we believe that there is tremendous evidence to show that there is a creator God. Uh, we talk about the anthropic principle, that everything in the universe, everything in the world has been designed for you, for the human being. And therefore, we believe that there is a God who made us. And if God made us, man is distinct and glorious and freedom is a marvelous thing. Alan, is there not a fine line between combating terrorism and the rights of the citizens to maintain privacy? Well, that line has been crossed. Um, mm. I don't think it's a fine line. I think that uh, crossing that line... So it's a big black line. Uh, the line has been erased. We have principles in the Fourth Amendment. Mm. You go after people that you have reason to suspect. You don't go after people that you have no probable cause to suspect. But that line has been obliterated. And now they're gathering up everything. And so if anybody wants to abuse that information, um, you know, if the hackers can hack into the White House and if they can hack into our large media companies, you don't think they're going to be hacking into uh, the NSA as well? And all of this data, you know, once it's accumulated, we're all at risk. Why is it that some of the advocates of the getting rid of the Constitution, though they don't say it quite like that, but some of the ad advocates are the Christians? You know, I don't know that the Christians are so much saying that. I think that there's, in, in philosophy, tremendous support for our rights. But in practice, there's tremendous support for uh, the authorities, uh, for the military, for yes. our security for agencies. Yeah. You see, there's this assumption that America is the good guy and, and pretty much does no wrong. Well, of course, America has been the good guy and America has been the great defender of freedom. Now, my friend, watching the Carter Report today with Alan Reinick, this great attorney, I just want you to get behind this and write to us and support this work, support the cause of freedom. I say to you today, write to me, John Carter, Post Office Box, 1900 Thousand Oaks, California, 91358 in Australia. Write to me at Terrigal. And we're going to put up Alan Reinick's address too. He's at Westlake Village, just a few miles from our office here in Moore Park. Write to Alan Reinick and stand for the cause of truth. Defend freedom. Defend the Bible, my friend. Defend the American Constitution. And remember what our Lord Jesus Christ said. You know the text, Alan, because you believe in Jesus the same as I do. Jesus, our blessed Lord, said, you will know the truth. What about it? And the truth shall set you free. And the truth shall set you free. Now, we're going to see you next time when Alan and I continue this conversation. Until now, God bless you.